Good evening. It's National Liberation Day here in South Korea. It's the day the country celebrates Korea's independence from Japanese colonial rule in 1945. And marking the 78th anniversary of that day, President Yoon Song Yeol said South Korea and Japan are now partners, sharing same values and interests. He also called attention to what he labeled anti state forces threatening society. Our Kim Do Yan has the details. On the day to celebrate Korea's independence from Japanese colonial rule, President Yoon Song yeol chose to look toward the future when it comes to relations with Japan rather than focusing on the past. On Tuesday was his second Liberation Day speech, and during the last one, he labeled Japan a neighbor, as he was still looking for a breakthrough in improving the bilateral ties. He started calling Japan a partner during this year's March 1st Independence Movement Day address. Yoon's speech also comes ahead of the trilateral summit between Seoul, Washington, and Tokyo later this week. He also attributed South Korea's success since independence to the ROK-US alliance's defense of democracy, contrasting it with North Korea, which he says is unable to escape from horrendous poverty and deprivation. This, he says, is a clear difference between the two sides that took different paths since independence on the peninsula, but South Korea is still exposed to dangers. 공산 전체주의를 맹종하며 조작 선동으로 여론을 왜곡하고 사회를 교란하는 반국가 세력들이 여전히 활개치고 있습니다. Also, he re-emphasized that the independence movement was not just to regain sovereignty but to establish freedom and democracy, and is thus a universal and just movement for humanity. The main ceremony for the nation's 78th anniversary of independence took place at Iwa Women's University, a university stemming from a women's school that produced many female independence activists during the colonial era. At the ceremony, Yoon awarded veterans and surviving family members of the Liberation Army in front of 2,000 attendees, including politicians, foreign diplomats, and invited citizens. Kim do Arirang News. The South Korean government has expressed deep regret over Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida sending ritual offerings to the controversial Yasukuni War Shrine. Seoul's Foreign Minister released a statement on Tuesday saying the leaders of the Japanese government and parliament sent offerings or paid visit to the Yasukuni Shrine that glorifies Japan's past wars of aggression. It also urged Japan to show genuine repentance on the past through action. The remarks come as Japan commemorates the anniversary of its surrender in World War II, with politicians paying tributes to the site that honors the country's war dead, including 14 Class A war criminals. Neighboring countries like South Korea and China regard such moves as an attempt to justify Japan's wartime atrocities. President Yoon Song yeols father, Yoon Gi Jung, has died at the age of 92. The top office on Tuesday announced the late professor emeritus of Yonsei University had passed away, and that President Yoon went to his side after attending the country's National Liberation Day event. The Yoon's will keep the funeral a private family affair, respectfully declining flowers and condolence visits. The late Yoon Gi Jung taught applied statistics from 1973 to 1997, with his son, the president, describing him as a man of principles. A senior presidential official said the leader will observe the traditional three day mourning period and return to his duties on the last day to prevent any absence from conducting state affairs. 
regarding U.S. trip to the United States for a trial level meeting at Camp David with its American and Japanese counterparts, the official said the departure time on Thursday may be adjusted, but the date remains unchanged. Now, over in Hawaii, the death toll from the devastating wildfires in Maui has risen to 99, with authorities warning the figure could double in the coming days. Our Isu Jin has the latest. The death toll from the Maui wildfires, the deadliest U.S. wildfires in more than 100 years, continues to rise. Hawaii Governor Josh Green told the media on Monday local time that the death toll is likely to double in the next 10 days. This comes a day after he toured the wildfire damage on Maui. Families will come together, but there's a lot of loss here. And I think uh, we're going to see significantly higher numbers uh, in the coming days as our professionals from FEMA and, and Maui Fire Police do their job. The total number of people that are missing or unaccounted for is still unknown as the harsh conditions such as the heat have made it difficult for cadaver dogs and rescue crews to conduct search and recovery operations. This is going to require every tool that we have in our toolbox. We are not going to be able to rely on all of the traditional programs that we do in the continental United States. As the death toll continues to go up, officials are facing criticism regarding their preparation and their handling of the deadliest wildfires in over a century. Hawaii's outdoor siren warning system, the largest in the world with around 400 alarms, was not activated during the fires. Other alert systems were instead activated, such as mobile phone alerts and messages on televisions and radio stations, which many deem to be insufficient. Just from our parking stall, to the entrance of our apartment complex. It went from blue skies to gray to black. And all we seen was embers from fire that we had no idea what's going on. There was no siren, nothing. There is also a lawsuit filed against Hawaii Electric that alleges that the fires were caused by the utility company failing to shut off the power lines that were knocked down by strong winds. The blaze devastated the town of Lahaina on Maui's west coast, damaging or destroying more than 2,200 structures. Recovery efforts are focused on providing direct aid that will help displaced residents temporarily move into hotels and motels, as well as grants for basic necessities such as food, water and medical supplies. Isujin, Arirang News. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.